So with all these studio programs, they're training a lot of native artists who I assume are producing a, a fair amount of work working full time. Um, so what happens to these artists and, and where does this art go? Well, the art really creates the opportunity for the development of a market around Native American art. That market continues and thrives to this day. And by the, the early uh, quarter of the, the 20th century, we start to see a shift uh, away from this idea that the cultures ought to be um, uh, fully assimilated mm. into what can be done to preserve those cultures, understanding that that assimilation practices really were not successful and that the um, idea of helping Native people to find some economic uh, means for wow. themselves to continue and also to reduce their dependency that had been created by these federal policies on the federal government. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that starts to happen, we see in 1921, we see the uh, establishment of the Gallup Intertribal Ceremonials, which has um, continued into the 21st century since 1921. The year after 1922, we see the establishment of the Santa Fe Indian Market, which was oh. specifically created in Santa Fe to create financial opportunities for those local artists, primarily in the area of ceramics. Mm -hmm. But by 1940, the Tulsa community starts to host the Tuls Tulsa Annual, which is a show that welcomes Indian participation. And in 1946, the Philbrook begins their Philbrook Indian Annual, that, which continues into the late 70s. And that is really one of the strongest markets that helps us to get into the markets that we have now. One of the reasons for that is that in the, at Tulsa, um, while it begins welcoming this very sort of restrictive studio style, by the mid-50s, Native Americans are looking to really express themselves not as depicting passing cultures, dying cultures, mm -hmm. but to really incorporate their own cultural paradigms into the visual arts. And so in 1958, Oscar Howe, uh, submits a painting that is very abstract. Mm -hmm. Some people have um, um, attuned it to cubism mm. and his image gets rejected. Oscar Howe, who is a, a Dakota Indian mm -hmm. and from South Dakota, then writes a letter to the Philbrook Museum representatives and he, if I might quote, mm -hmm. I actually brought the quote of it. He says, are we to be held back forever with one phase of Indian, Indian painting that is the most common way. Are we to be herded like a bunch of sheep with no right for individualism, dictated to, as the Indian has always been, put on reservations and treated like a child and only the white man knows what is best for him. But one could easily turn to become a social protest painter. I only hope the art world will be not one more contributor to holding us in chains. Oh, amazing. This letter really begins and bursts the beginning of contemporary Native American art on this continent and establishes or opens the door, I think, for other Native American artists to start interpreting their cultures into not only what kinds of images that they feel are best appropriate, but also what kinds of materials. Wow. So once again, art is not only just a reflection of the circumstances in which artists work, but it provides us with a lens to actually what's happening in the moment in these communities and with these individuals. Absolutely. Yeah.